Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and you can watch it later at your convenience. Um, for anyone who is not from uh, Nebraska uh, watching today or watching the recording, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library, we provide um, training and resources and databases and grants and support um, to all sorts of libraries in the state. So we have shows on Encompass Live that could be for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we bring guest speakers sometimes, uh, but sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on and do presentations for us. Um, and specifically, at the very at the on the last Wednesday of the month, which is today. I can't believe June is almost over. <laughs> Seriously. Um, yeah. Uh, um, we have our Pretty Sweet Tech Day, uh, which is when Amanda Sweet, good morning, Amanda. Good morning. She comes on the show and talks about to us about something um, techie related. Um, we, we have tech related things other times in the month too, but um, if you are looking for something more on the tech side of librarianship, uh, this would be the show to definitely um, keep up on. And today we're going to be talking about something fun and techy, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you like to get out and, and about um, geocaching. So I'm going to just hand it over to you, Amanda, and tell us all about um, how we can do this uh, with our libraries. Sweet. <laughs> so this is something that I've actually been kind of exploring and doing for a little while. And then not too long ago, I actually got a question from a librarian asking about geocaching tools. Wow. And she was asking for if they would be able to check out like GPS enabled devices to be able ah. to do geocaching. And I found out that sure. most of the existing guides out there are telling people that they actually need a separate specific device to be able to do all this stuff, but you don't. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of describe what is geocaching, what can you do with it, and what can libraries do with it? Mm -hmm. So the best way that I can think to describe geocaching is actually um, Pokemon Go. So, uh -huh. yep. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of you have probably played Pokemon Go or seen people playing Pokemon Go, but never connected it to geocaching, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So basically you open up the Pokemon Go app on your phone, Mm -hmm. And then it will tell you, it'll pop up little markers and say, there's a Pokemon near you. And then you'll use the app to navigate to where it tells you the Pokemon is. Yep. And then you use the app to try to catch that Pokemon. And basically, that's all geocaching is, is you're mm -hmm. using an app to navigate and you're using ge like longitude and latitude markers to be able to find different treasures mm -hmm. or Pokemon or whatever it happens to be. And it just uses your phone's GPS. Yeah, I yep. have it on. Yeah. And I know some libraries did do, uh, when when um, Pokemon Go first came out, um, and some still do probably do it, there was a lot of libraries that did events around it. Yeah. So I know yeah. libraries do know um, about that at least, yeah. And in hindsight, I probably should have just put just like Pokemon Go in the description, but I didn't <laughs> think to do that. So, yeah. so kind of what I'll be talking about in this one is that what a lot of people don't know is that there's a huge geocaching community, not just in Nebraska, but across the nation and around the world. And they've kind of put themselves all on a website called geocaching.com. So you can see on their website, they call it the world's largest treasure hunt. 
So what happened is the geocaching.com people, they put together this set of guidelines that say, if you want to hide a treasure, you can hide a treasure. Just make sure that it's family friendly, make sure that it's safe. Don't put any um, weapons or profanity or anything inside your treasure case. Submit a picture of it, we'll review it, and then you can hide your treasure and put it onto our shared map. And then anyone anywhere can go find that treasure. And then you can also put in a little log book inside your little treasure box mm -hmm. so people can sign their name and say, I was here. I found it. it. You know? <laughs> and they also have a rating on difficulty level. So they have um, super easy ones. So if you're working with younger kids or adults that are just not having a whole lot of time, there's a lot of these that are just pretty close to a trail or like not really in a really difficult place to find. And it's kind of like those easy wins that you can just kind of take a stroll and go find places. And then you can also like help people work their way up through finding stuff in like the hollowed out tree trunks and all these different weird random places. Um, the only kind of, they add little guidelines on there that say you can't have a treasure that's buried and you can't have a treasure that you need to actually like move the earth to be able to find it. And it has to, they have like this whole awesome set of guidelines that makes it safer, easier, family friendly, and just kind of awesome to be able to do. And so they have like a really quick step-by-step -step thing to be able to set this all up. And so they have um, in the geocaching system, they have a free version and then they have a paid version. And in library land, the vast majority of what you probably want to do is actually in the free version. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to download the app and use the geolocation markers to be able to navigate your way around to find different treasures. And then you'd be able to set up um, lesson plans and activities to be able to get little groups together. And so that's why I also brought up this guide. So this is, and I also, I love the name of this website, Run Wild My Child. Yeah. And so this person actually ran into the same problem that I had, which was there, was, there weren't a whole lot of guides about geocaching. There weren't a lot of um, mm. tips or tricks for how to use, there are a lot of hardcore geocachers that say that you need like some thousand dollar device to be able to go out and do this and you need to be able to triangulate to the specific location you yeah. don't <laughs> you don't that sounds like a lot Just, right yeah. 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 wait now that our phones can do gps i find that really hard to believe yeah right yeah Very. so yeah. Run Wild My Child actually gives the whole rundown for the beginner's guide to geocaching with kids. And this is why I didn't make a whole separate slide deck because this information mm -hmm. is, it's already out there. Like, why do I need to reformat it when you can just go here? Yep. So I actually recommend starting with this and you can close all the pop-ups, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I would actually recommend um, running through this and I'll put this link into the chat so that you can give this a sift through and get more of the details that you need to actually get started. Chat, run wild my child. There. Oh, I put it in, let me send it to that's okay. I can pull it from there and move it over to the chat. I got Perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So this actually gives you the whole steps for how to actually get started with it. And it is super easy to do. And it also gives recommendations and tips for how to kind of avoid some of the pitfalls that happen with um, geocaching. So I'm not going to run through this entire article right now. It's actually easier and probably better for you to just read it yourself when you get time to do it. But it gives the entire description for what you need. What, what I will do is go over here to say that you are not 
locked down to the existing treasures that are already available in your community or near you. They do have an entire guidelines for if you want to actually be able to hide your own geocaches yourself. Mm -hmm. So in this community, you can actually join the, the geocaching community and set up an entire themed geocache session all on your own. So there have been um, organizations, historical societies, genealogical societies that actually hid entire collections of, gene of um, basically hidden treasures that kind of share the secrets of the town. Not oh, like the local fun. Yeah, so it's not like, just yeah. stuff. It actually has a like a story or yeah. And so you can actually hide those, and then you can make a an entire lesson plan activity that's centered on the geocaches that you hid, and then you can also put it out to the community at large and even across the state. So there are like really hardcore geocachers that just go across the state or across the nation and go find this stuff. So you can create something that not just your small activity can find, but something that the entire state or the entire world can find, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought up the, this is, I won't say it's hidden, but it took me some clicking to find it. So these are just the geocaching hiding guidelines so that you know um, how to go about getting this started. So this time I'll put it in. There. And then I will also put in the main geocaching site. Geocaching main site. There. Yeah, we'll add all of these links to the archive page too. Um, so those of you watching, you know, if you're looking for it later, um, yeah. it, these will all be linked off of there. Sweet. And, oh, I actually didn't notice these before because I hadn't scrolled all the way down, down. But my favorite animal is a frog, so <laughs> this is looking pretty good right now. All right, so let me jump back up here. And I'm going to bring over this little tab on my other screen so that you can see this other thing that I'm looking at. We have that. Okay. So this is more for the probably closer toward the adult and teen side, but there's an entire community on Trail Link that has already mapped and ranked all of the most popular geocaching trails across Nebraska. And unfortunately, they're kind of like clustered more toward the right side of the state, but there's mm -hmm. more over on the left. So this is filtered down to Nebraska specifically, mm -hmm. but if you were to go over more toward like the Denver side or the Wyoming side, there's actually more that are right over the border if you yes, include God. that on here. Yep. So if you're in like the Scotts Bluff or Shadron area, you might actually be closer to the, some of the ones that are veering into mm -hmm. Colorado than um, the ones on the other side of the state. Yeah. So you can actually use this trail link to be able to send people over or even just go on um, library hiking trails and do some of these geocaching adventures. And you can click through a whole bunch of them and see their ratings and see like um, a bit more about the trail itself, the difficulty level of the trail, and then find something that's suitable and even do like library field trips to go on geocaching adventures and then head back over to Trail Link to be able to share what your library did and share your trail photos and share your, um, your interaction with this. And maybe you wanna add a trail yourself. Just putting that out there. So I'm gonna go over here and grab this other 
page. Yeah, da, 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 da. It is still loading. The internet has been just a touch slow today. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Sometimes I've had to reload it. Has it been slow for you too today? I noticed stuff earlier, yeah, was uh, spinning and spinning more than usual, yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. That got it. So I'll also put in the sample lesson plan here and these collection of lesson plans. Oh, yeah here so this one was actually like surprisingly hidden but the geocaching community also has um they have a lot of educators that have already done a lot of this kind of stuff so mm -hmm. they have samples of lesson plans so the one here in nebraska they called the pony express mm -hmm. and they have this entire um rundown so you can actually use this as kind of a starting point to be able to um, build something out that this is just kind of your basic template so that you know what you can do to customize it to your own community. Because the this is the information that people mostly want to know to be able to know if this is the right trail for them, like including the difficulty level, terrain, possibly the number of um, geocaches that are in that area. And if you want to generate your own little advertising thing for your library or your community, this is an example of the type of video that you might want to take to be able to share what's over there. And then a customized um, picture. I don't know why they used a picture of like a large cityscape because Elkhorn doesn't actually look like that <laughs> <laughs> so that was an interesting choice but you can customize it with your That's own you for using stock photos <laughs> yeah so i will also put in this example here and i'll call it pony express lesson plan example there and then I'll put in this sample of a more, like a higher level, more comp like complex lesson plan example. Uh, da, 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 da. And I'll call this one geocaching with Google Earth lesson plan sample. There. And now I'm going to, and both of these lesson plans are actually completely free to use. Um, they're free to use, they use free tools and you can have them set up and running pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna close that one, close that one. We might revisit this one. So I'm going to keep that open. Yeah, yeah, someone did want to know if you could share the link, the one on the, um, the what is it, the trails, the trail link site. Oh, the one I, that I think, do is, is, is that a URL that will get them just to the Nebraska? So this one goes specifically to the Nebraska one. Yeah. So let me copy this one. And this site has all over everywhere. So if you click around, you can find yeah, anywhere. start with Nebraska, and then, like you said, if you're anywhere on the borders, look into the other states just yeah. across. Yeah. There. So you can also jump into Find Trails, and you can go pretty much anywhere. 
And they also have, um, you can filter it down by the specific type of activity that you want to do. So no matter where you are, like you can find it. So they actually have a finding geo, um, geocaching trails by state. So if you jump down into Colorado, um, you can just, like I actually drive between here and Wisconsin pretty often. So I've actually mm -hmm. looked at um, here, Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Oh, they actually this would have been home. fun for, yeah, because I just drove to New York, well, not just in April for vacation, and that's how we usually go there. Um, I'm going to try to remember this for things to do on the way instead of just, right? you, know, <laughs> you know, what's along the way <laughs> that we can and do. Some of these are actually stationed like right off the highway too, because they know mm -hmm. people want to take like the road trip and do the geocaching mm -hmm. road trip. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. it doesn't have to be a walking thing out in the woods, and then and you know it can be you know, these things can be anywhere. Yeah, this isn't right. Just, yeah, it could be in a city or yeah. And here is hoping that my internet decides to play nicely with me. Da, 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 da. And it is not. Confounded. I'm getting the little bouncing ball of doom as it's trying to think about what it's going to do. <laughs> Come on. I believe you can do it. We have a question that popped up that someone wants to know about um, how how do these um, geocaches stay safe? Basically, you know, how do <clears throat> like, they not just like disappear? Like someone come along and saying, "Oh, somebody left their thing here. Let me take it or steal it." I mean, do they yeah. get stolen? Is, is that an issue? Or and so. The geocaching community, like from the reading through all the forums, the geocaching community is actually pretty respectful. Mm -hmm. And it's more or less that like they respect the whole overall nature of what's going on that most people don't touch it. Right. Um, I can't promise that no one would ever mess with any of the hidden geocaches. I would think it would be more people that don't know what it is or why it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Like in some of the video on that my main page was like stuff stuck up in a tree or underneath yep. a bridge or something. Yeah. And you could definitely come across that by accident. And yeah. depending on your um the type of person you are. Obviously you open it, it has a whole it has a I mean they have labels on it that explains this is a geocache. Here's the book. Yep. I mean it's not just some random thing that someone goes, Oh, I wonder what this is all about. Um and ideally someone who is not into geocaching and was comes across it by accident would read that be respectful and say oh well let me just put that back and maybe in rather than you know walk off with it but and that is a risk you take i guess just putting it out there so like it is a part of the hiding guidelines is that they recommend that people don't put really expensive things in there like we call it treasure because it's a treasure hunt but it's more about the journey like if you put like rare coins into a geocache, you, you're increasing the odds that it's going to get stolen. Right. But right. most of people just put like little figurines in it. And a lot of people actually say like the geocaching community also has like a rule of thumb that if you take something like take a trinket out of a geocache, you're supposed to put something back into it. Mm -hmm. And so you might take a little like one thing that one of the common ones is that after Pokemon Go became a thing, people started hiding little Pokemon figurines inside geocaches. <laughs> and they would take a Pikachu out, but then they would put a Poliwhirl back in. <laughs> and so it's just like the people, so, it, sometimes people don't suck as bad as you, as you yeah. expect them to. And people are just like so enthralled with the thrill of actually finding this stuff that they want to keep the adventure alive for pe mm -hmm. for other people. And I 
can't guarantee there's never going to be a douchebag out there who does it. <laughs> but for like, and if you actually were to build these for your own library, I would actually recommend going out intermittently and double checking the things that you've actually hidden out there. Because sometimes when you have something that's designed for an educational purpose, sometimes that will like override in people's mind. So if you put like little papers or infographics or pamphlets or brochures or trinkets that are local and people know that it's for an educational adventure, sometimes people will take it out without putting something new back in because they don't want to disrupt the, the, the designed experience. Mm. So in the case of something that's like from a genealogy, genealogical society or a library or historical society, you might want to just intermittently go in and refill. Um, yeah, you can double check yeah. what you put out yeah. there. Yeah. And because more often than not, you want people to take stuff out of it. You want people to take like a little piece of local history with them so that they yeah. can, they want, you want them to take that little piece with them and then maybe leave a little piece of themselves that says, I resonated with this and here's like, here's a little bit of my story. Which brings me to the next little piece of it, which is that you can actually encourage people to tell their own story using the geocaching adventures. So you can ask people to like write a, you can set up little writing activities and ask people to write a letter or write a story that shares their interaction with the town or their cultural history or something that they want to be able to share with the world and ask them to put it into a geocaching container. And a lot of times these are, the guidelines indicate that these should be weatherproofed containers that are like a sturdy plastic mm -hmm. or like I've seen a lot of like the um, the plastic ones that have the little snap down sides. And, I saw that in some of the videos there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I've seen some of the glass ones, but the glass is actually more likely to, like the glass seems sturdier, mm. but it can also chip more. Yeah. So they've used the, I've seen more plastic containers than I've seen glass containers, but I'm sure they would both work. Mm -hmm. And so one of the recommendations from the, like the historical societies and the libraries is collecting the stories, collecting visual elements and collecting the actual written piece and then keeping copies of that story so in like a stylized format and then asking like letting people take a copy of each different story then asking people to add an edition of their own and so that can be done in like a controlled environment within the library and then people sometimes people want to share a story but they're too like it's too close to the heart to be able to put it out in like a organized public way. They want to be able to just write it themselves and then kind of tuck it into the hidden geocache on their own. They might not want to add their name to it, but they want their story out there. So in that case, if you want to let people be able to do that, you might actually want to go through and check intermittently to read through some of the stories that have been put in there to make sure that they're appropriate. And I don't want to, I'm not like a proponent of censorship, but sometimes things just shouldn't be in there. If that, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Especially if you're working in, with different age ranges or if you want to be, if you want parents to feel safe letting kids of different ages be able to access that stuff. So just putting that out there. It's up to you what kind of like guidelines, mm -hmm. restrictions, materials you want to be able to put in there. And let me grab, oh, this finally loaded. Okay. So if you want to know a little bit, so the other one, the geocaching with kids is kind of the begin like one of the beginner's guides that I really liked but if you have questions about 
what to hide and what types of things would be most recommended and getting the right GPS accuracy information. Mm. I would actually recommend the GIS geography. Uh, 101 guide. There. I'm hoping that it loads faster for you than it did for me, but I think that's just an internet thing. Let's see what it does. I clicked on it. Yep. Now it's loaded. It just loaded up for me. Yeah. Sweet. It took him, you know, whoever that was, five, ten seconds, but yeah. Sometimes it's gone like perfectly fine, and sometimes it's just like I think the internet might be cutting in and out that way. Hmm. Oh, well, what are you going to do? And so I'm going to close this so I can kind of tuck that away. And then I don't think we'll need this one anymore. And. Wow, I did not know that there were 1,663 geocaches just in Lincoln alone. That That's. That seems yeah, like a lot. Seems like a lot, yeah. But what do they consider around Lincoln? Yeah. I mean, it. it is a good question. Like, it could be between Lincoln and Omaha, and it could be, like, within 20 miles. Who knows? <laughs> I guess that's what the search near you function is for. Eh, toss up. Hmm. And one other thing that I wanted to pop up here, I'm getting the little bouncing dot again. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So there we go. So the hiding guide is for like an overarching thing, but if you want to find more regional um, hiding laws, rules, or regulations to make sure that you're doing everything on the up and up, they also put in a regional hmm. geocaching policy. And nine times out of 10, what the library schools and everything would be hiding in there and putting together nine times out of 10. I doubt that you're going to really need to worry about the regional policies. You can mostly just stick with our general hiding guidelines, but you never know. So it actually helps to just be able to know what's going on in your particular state. And sometimes the Nebraska State Parks will actually set out specific guidelines for specific mm -hmm. locations or areas. And some of them will actually want you to check with the state park before you actually hide something in there so that the people in the state park trail actually know what's going on. And sometimes you actually have to get spe like special permits or special things depending on where you're hiding it. So this is the other thing that I like to pull up as you're starting to kind of like plan out what you're doing and figuring out what's going on because we like to keep it legal. So there we go. Of course, yeah, you definitely want to check locally to make sure it's just something that's okay to, to do. Yeah. Um, you would check with your municipality too to see um, your city yeah. your village do they have any rules about this let them know you're doing these things this event or this program yeah and nine times out of ten if you accidentally break one of the policies that you didn't know existed um the local municipality is just going to be like well this is the thing and now that you had it hidden out there we'll just get the permit now and blah 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 so most people are not going to be like you're not going to get the geocaching police after you, but mm -hmm. it's just better to know it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. 
So that's actually pretty much the last major thing that I had actually wanted to go over in terms of how to get the geocaching up and running. It's actually ridiculously easy to do, especially if you want to be able to use the pre-existing geocaches that are out there. And the only other recommendation that I had for you was to be able to put together specific um, so you know how they make like those make and take packs or they make the customized displays that are on mm -hmm. different events. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only other thing that I rec would recommend for pairing these different uh, geocaching adventures with extra and like extra different activity of this events, materials, and kind of like the awesome different stuff that's going on. Like if you were going to be doing a geocaching adventure, set up a related um, genealogically genealogical event. I can never pronounce that word to save my <laughs> dying life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Genealogical, yeah. yeah. I can't spell it. <laughs> oh, I can't. I always get autocorrected whenever I spell it, and I'm now afraid to say it again. So. <laughs> And were there any other questions that came in? Um, yeah, um, let's see. Um, yes, if anybody has any questions, um, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, if anyone does anything else um, you want to ask Amanda about, you want to see anything else about this, um, if any of you have done any geocaching, either yourself personally or at um, your library, to your library, uh, yeah. let us know. Uh, and while we wait and see if that comes in, you'd mentioned I, I'm looking at on the um, description for your session today about summer reading. And I was like, because I can never remember. I think, and I know a lot of people are already into their summer reading program or have it planned out, but this is definitely something you could quickly add in if you want needed some other activity or you want to add something new. This year's summer reading um, theme is adventure adventure begins yeah. at your library and, and this would definitely fall into that category of adventure and i'm glad you reminded me of that because that was the other thing that i was waiting for it to load which was uh, da, 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 the metropolitan library system out of i don't know which state because it didn't say on their main page. They put together a library program for the Tales and Trails summer reading theme. And I am putting that link into the chat now so you can see what that looks like. Summer reading series, geocache. There. And there's also, you should see the number of tabs that I've just been waiting for it to load on the other side. I don't know what the deal with my computer is right now. Oh yeah, this is from, um, yeah, 20, uh, where's the page? I just have to read for, yeah, 2021, the theme was Tales and Tales, yeah. Um, so the other thing is that the geocaching website has a shop that has mm. geocaching starter kits. So you can actually purchase a starter kit to make things easier for yourself too. And if you want to get the frog plushie, then so be it. <laughs> so you don't actually have to do all this from scratch you can just grab a kit and it does like a there's a whole quick start guide to geocaching and there's um uh cases that you can hide stuff in and it's got all of it all together so you can go super low cost and gather the materials yourself and use what's available for free online, or you can grab the essentials kits 
and just get it off of there. And the other one is the Cash Advance. I have a love-hate relationship with the name of that, Cash Advance, because it sounds like you're getting a loan from like one of those sketchy <laughs> places. But we all know what kind of cash they mean. <laughs> and I will put in the link to this other geocaching starter kit too. There. There. Yeah, and I was looking at some of these on the shop. They're not that uh, the starter kit, the ready to hide cash. I mean, yeah, they looks like they range from twenty dollars up to forty, depending on how big you want to go for the pre-filled ones. Yeah, it's they're really not super expensive. Like they're really not too bad, and mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff you might actually already have on hand anyway. So. You might not That's even true. Need little things that I mean, this is I think too that comes out of some reading. There are so many. Um, <clears throat> I know libraries often you know they have little giveaways or you buy like a hundred you know pins or pens or something that are yeah. to go. And if you have extras, those would be something that could be you know fun to put in one of these. You, you always have leftovers <laughs> basically from previous programs that could be the things that you put into. Uh, and so the ones that have been most popular are the hide a cash kit and the cash with your phone starter kit. Mm -hmm. There. Can you show those pages on your screen here that's being shared? Yeah, um, oh, as no. soon as they load again. Okay. <laughs> there. So this one. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah. There. The find a cash starter kit. And the vast majority of this, I would actually bank on that you probably already have laying around the house um the biggest thing like that you would get is that you might not already have is the quick start guide and this is mostly just for like if you have a girl scout troop or a boy scout troop or a stem steam club just having kids be able to walk away with something that has the logo and has like their adventure that they can take home with them and kind of play with and do that like this is one of the biggest things for that mm -hmm. otherwise there is definitely not a need for you to purchase anything separate to be able to do any of this stuff this just adds that ac little extra splash of awesome Yeah, da, 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 da. what I was scanning through to check is if they actually just sell the guide on its own. But I think, I mean, the quick start guide is also, it's more or less online too in those different places. So it's really, it just makes it easier. So now after that, I think that was all I pretty much had. And I can wait for a bit to see if there are any questions that come through. I really want that frog. You have no idea. <laughs> Someone needs to hide that somewhere. <laughs> right? Pretty much. You, yeah. If you hide that frog somewhere, you let me know. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions you want to ask? Anything you want to know more about? Know if any other libraries doing this? Like we already shared one, of course, but. 
Oh my god, his name is Signal the Frog. That oh. is amazing. <laughs> official, he's oh, the official geocaching mascot. Okay. Huh. I did not know that. I thought it was just a cool frog. The frog with an antenna attached to his head for the the GPS. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's yeah. A combination of technology and nature. This is why we're doing this on Pretty Sweet Tech today. Yeah. Right. You don't know, but I just added that frog to cart <laughs> on my phone. But you know. You might have it anyways. All right. Right. Well, I don't see any questions coming in right now. But that's okay. Uh, we've got a lot of links here, a lot of places you all can go to um, research and look up more about um, doing this. Um, but we will have links to all, all these links will be included in the archive page, as I said. So um, we'll save those for you there as well. I'll put together a list of them. I might just put it into a Google Doc and then. There is a lot of them. Yeah, if you want to do yeah. that as a single thing. Yeah. It, can can you save the chat and then i'll just convert yes. everything into a google doc and give little yes. descriptions yep this these this will come off as a as a text doc or something that i can send to you yeah cool. not a problem yeah that'll make it easier yeah since we've got so many definitely right all right i don't see other questions um is there anything else you want to show before i um i can pull uh, control back to my screen and do our little wrap up. I think Signal the Frog is a nice little image That's to end so on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's see here. Do screen up, there we go. All right. Yes, as you can see, I've been opening all these different things that I've <laughs> just been sending on my screen too to look at them. Um, they added up a little bit. Yeah, and we do already have, we did have already in the general um, description for today's show, a link to the main geocaching.com website. So you already have that to start with. Um, but a lot of these other specific things, we will, um, that's a summary, um, add, uh, like Amanda said, we'll have a Google doc put together that'll have links to all these various um, pages and, and things that she has uh, shared today. Um, and as for the recording, it, um, if you uh, use whatever is your search engine of choice and look up Encompass Live, you'll come up with links to either our main page, to both our main page and our archive page. This is our upcoming shows, but our archives are right here below that. And uh, today's uh, most recent shows are at the top of the list here. So today's will be there. Um, should be by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, go to Webinars got a process, YouTube's got a process, our recordings all go up on the Library Commission's YouTube channel. Um, and then Amanda put together her uh, Word doc for this. Um, once I have everything up here and ready, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show uh, will get an email from me letting you know that it is available here for you to um, go and watch and get the links. We do have a search feature here in our archives. You can search our full show archives or just our most recent 12 months if you want something just current. Um, and that is because this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered. And I'm not gonna go all the way back, but uh, which was in January, 2009. 2009, so we're on like 16 years. And we have all of our shows here, all of them on our YouTube channel. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date when you do watch anything that you see on here. Uh, many of the shows will be fine to watch whenever, stand the test of the times, have good, useful information, but some things can be will become old and outdated. Um, services may have changed drastically. Resources may have changed, will have changed drastically. Uh, links may be broken on some of the really older ones. People probably work at a different place than when they presented for us 10 years ago, possibly. So just pay attention to that date when you are watching any of our recordings. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, which I have open over here. If you like to use Facebook, you can give us a like over there. And you do we see here, we do announcements, reminders about the shows. Here's a reminder for today's show, uh, when the recordings are available. Uh, we use the hashtag EncompLive when we post on Twitter or Instagram um, or anywhere else. 
So um, the Library Commission does have both um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, so you may see that hashtag NCOMP Live. And then when we do Pretty Sweet Tech, um, we add Pretty Sweet Tech hashtag do for the our special end of the month session. Yeah. All right, so that does wrap it up for today's show. Does anybody have any last minute desperate questions they want to ask of Amanda before we wrap things up? You can type in your question section. Get that out of the way, get that out of the way. Um, next week. All right, and uh, next week, so we've got our upcoming shows here. You got, see, so we've got some July dates filled in. We're even starting to get some August. Um, Keep an eye on the calendar to see what we have. We will be filling in those other July dates, most likely. Um, see when we get things added. But next week, our presentation will be on helping students be Google aware. And this is a presentation from um, library media specialist at uh, Horace Greeley High School Library in Chappaqua, New York, my home state. Uh, this is a presentation that Pamela did at the Computers and Libraries Conference earlier this year, and I invited her to come on and do it here on our show, too. So if you're, you know, Google is out there, people are using it, students are using it, and um, so this would be something good for, not just for school, I mean, and obviously for school libraries specifically, because that's who she, where she is from, but anyone who needs to teach anyone how to be aware of how Google works and how you can and can't use it or should or shouldn't use it. So um, do sign up for that show and any other of our upcoming ones that we have coming up. Um, Amanda will be with us again on July 31st. I assume that is the next uh, last Wednesday of July. Did and, I, um, did I have, Brian send you the days for the memory care thing or did I just think about that real hard? Not yet, no. I know you're gonna to talk to yeah. him about it, yes. I must have just thought about it real hard. <laughs> I see him at ALA, so I'll ask him there. Yes, yes. Plans are in the work for what will be coming up. So that's like five weeks away. We've got plenty of time. So um uh, if you want to sign up for it and you'll find out what a specifically the topic will be then, yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, always the last Wednesday of the month is our pretty sweet tech, unless they're, um, yeah, usually isn't, we don't usually need to put that one. All right. All right. I didn't see any questions come up. So I think we are good for today. Um, I think this is a, a great program for libraries, something really different to do. I don't think I've heard of many libraries doing it that it can be related to so many different programs that libraries do yeah. out. Yeah. Um, like I said, some reading this year, adventure. I mean, um, adventure begins at your library. That is a pretty nice broad topic, just anything adventure wise. So you could add this as a something, you know, see what's in your area. Um, I mean, it is its own adventure. It even is, if yes. you, yeah. <laughs> But then you can relate to anything. You're talking about historical societies, talking about things that are, you know, in, in your community that are going on, um, or just something fun or cool for your teens to do. Uh, I think they would um, be a great program to get them involved in. Um, but it's for all ages, which is awesome too. Right? Yeah. It's not specific. Yeah. All right. So I think that will wrap it up for today. Then I didn't see anybody have any other extra questions. So thank you everybody for being here with us today. Thank you, Amanda. Good to see you. Um, have a good. Are you're tra are you traveling to uh, ALA? Yep. Um, I fly out on Friday. Ah, all right. So, and if anyone wants to visit the ALA makerspace, yes. um, I think it. Brian called it the Tech Test Pilot Playground. Tech Test Pilot. Playground. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Brian Pitchman. She's talking about. He's been on the Encompass Live a bunch of times in the past, and Amanda and he work together on doing a lot of things at um, Computers and Libraries Conference, ALA now. Yeah. So ALA is in San Diego. If any of you are heading out there, um, yeah, look for Amanda to be there too. Sweet. And everyone have a good trip if you are. Um, otherwise, I will see you all in a, at a future episode of Encompass Live. So, hey, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>